going to talk about uh, significant figures, um, sometimes referred to as sig figs. Uh, this video, I'm basically going to show you, um, well, just talk a little bit about what, what significant figures are and how to read them and how to round them. In another video tutorial, I'll show you how to uh, do the uh, calculations, like adding and subtracting, multiplying and dividing, because it's very important to know how to do that. Um, so the best way I can describe this is if we look at a measurement. So let's say we have here a, a graduated cylinder. So let's say that this is a, a graduated cylinder with the measurement markings on it. And let's say that this is done in uh, milliliters. Okay, so we got 37 milliliters on this graduated cylinder. What we're going to do is we're going to read the volume on this graduated cylinder. Now if you notice here there's a meniscus. We have to read the meniscus right here at the bottom. Let's change color. Let's go to red so you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to look at the bottom of the meniscus and I'm going to read over on the scale. Okay. All right. So this is my eye and I'm looking at the scale here. I'm looking at it coming in right about here. All right. So the question is, what's the measurement? What would I record this as? Well, if we look at the measurement, we know that it's at least 36 milliliters. Okay, everybody would agree it's 36, not 37, because this would be the 37 mark, this is the 36 mark. All right, we could all agree that it's going to have a decimal point here, right, because it's not quite 37, but more than 36. So it would be 36.1, 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, 0.5, 0 0.6. Okay, so we know that we can all agree that it's probably about 36.6. Milliliters. Now the problem is, it's not quite 0.6, is it? It's a little bit more, but it's not quite 0.7 either. So I have to make a guess here. I know it's definitely bigger than 0.6 and less than 0.7. So I don't want to put a 7 here. I know we definitely have to keep it as a 6. So the question is, what is the next number? Well, it kind of looks like it's a little bit closer to the 6. So I'm going to say 4. Okay, so I'm going to say 36.64 milliliters. This is a measurement made with the correct number of significant figures. Now this digit here, we're not sure about, are we? Because maybe somebody else would come along and look at that measurement and say, yeah, I see that as 36.6, but they could say 5, couldn't they? Is there any to, anything to say that they can't say that that's 0.5? I mean, it looks like it could be kind of in the middle. Maybe, you know, the way you're looking at it could be a little, but maybe it's 36.66. I mean, this last number is always unsure. Don't forget your units. You should always write a unit when you write a number. So 36.6, we know that those digits are all in agreement, aren't they? We all agree on these three digits in our measurement, but we're unsure about this one. This is called uncertainty. And there's nothing that you can do about this. The, every measurement you make must have uncertainty in it. That last digit is always going to be questionable. Okay, so no matter what measurement you make, you may see an electronic balance and it looks like it's fluctuating between a 4, a 5, a 4, 5, 6, 6, 5, 6, and it keeps bouncing back and forth in that last number because the machine doesn't know what to do with this situation. And that's referred to as significant figures. Significant figures include all the certain and uncertain digit, digits in the measurement. And students, when they're making measurements in the laboratory, often forget this part of it. They're thinking of science as being always certain, but we have to include that uncertain digit. And that's the idea behind significant figures. Okay, So when a scientist writes a number, such as um, oh, 40.2 grams, well, this has three significant figures. Okay, so one, two, three significant figures. So you can read the number of significant figures based on the measurement. The last one is always indicated as the questionable one. So two of them are absolutely certain, but the scientist was not sure about the decimal place here. Um, if we have the number 412, again, we're going to have three 
significant figures. Okay, so there's two things here. One, if you make the measurement, you need to record the correct number of significant figures. To do that, always make a guess on the last number. There should be uncertainty in your last measurement. What I would do is I would look at the scale. This is the ones place, right? So that would be the ones place. This would be the tenth place, right? Point one. This would be the ones place. And in bet between here, in between, if I were to zoom in right into that space, in between the two lines would be the point zero one skin. That is your uncertainty. So whatever the scale, whatever the smallest little tick mark is on your scale, which in this case my measurement would be 0.1, go one beyond it. And that's how you'll know how many significant figures when you're making measurements. Okay. We'll do a lab and we'll kind of talk about this and see this a little bit more. But that's generally the, the idea behind what significant figures are. Okay.